the story starts slightly before 1994 and how we actually come about establishing the charity. It all goes back to the riots. I think the riots was in around 92, early 92, the uh, riots which happened mainly in Liverpool. And at that time, the Conservative Party um, was um, in power. Somebody called Michael Essertine was the environmental minister working for Maggie Thatcher. And um, he was asked to sort out these riots and see what was there. And there was a big, a big public inquiry about the riots. Subsequently, um, what came about was that the lack of investment in um, urban areas and there'd been a, a long decline in heavy industry and areas similar to uh, uh, Liverpool, um, like the Black Country, had suffered from that industrial decay. His idea was to uh, um, regenerate those areas using central government money. Um, but he also wanted local areas put some money in themselves, both um, local public authorities that time health authorities, which are now primary care trusts, um, and also private business. So he really was the first person what started to look at how we could start bringing a cocktail of money together and, um, and also putting plans together for that regeneration. And at that time, the health service was very much a sickness service. So it wasn't really about promoting health, it was more about you know, trying to fix you when you were sick. So the health authority felt at that time they wanted to be more health promotion. Coupled with this idea of having a charity uh, to promote health. Then I was working in the area, in the, I've worked in voluntary organisations all my life. And um, they said, oh, I know Malcolm Bailey works in community development and that's what they wanted. And they asked me to form the charity and found the charity. I became involved with Murray Hall in 2013 and a friend of mine who went to a different church from me he uh, felt that uh, that we should set up a food bank in Tipton because the need was quite great this was post um, the financial crisis and things were getting quite bad for some people and we set up a food bank and what happened was that uh, Murray Hall acted as our umbrella organisation so that they, they took over the, um, the procedures and they gave us a sort of structure in which to work and then we within 15 months gained our own uh, charitable status. So the food bank is now an autonomous um, organisation but we still have links with Murray Hall being our founder body so to speak. I suppose I first came in contact with Murray Hall before I started as an employee, I was doing my first degree in early years education and they were advertising for someone to carry out a piece of work that was a, a task and finish piece of work, so a six month piece of work on early years. So I applied for that and was successful and I did that piece of work and, and ended it. And then I was asked to do another piece of work, but this time it was up with older people. And at the time, because I was working with early years, I didn't know whether I wanted to do the older people work, but I did it because it was still in the care sector. And I quite enjoyed working with older people as well as workers, so it kind of gave me a range for a different age group to work with. And I liked Murray Hall because of its values of working with the community, because working with the community, supporting individuals, helping them to have the best start, just, I have a passion for working with the community, working with people and seeing the difference that it makes by involving them in different projects, especially those on the margins of society. So we started um, from a, a desk in a church hall, St Luke's it was then, and um, we set about setting up the charity, um, setting the constitution, what we was about, um, health and well-being making more people involved in their health, making the decisions which affect their health. And the idea was using community development to do that, as opposed to saying people, well, um, you need to do this, you need to do that. It's people recognising what they needed, what they want, and getting them to come up with their solutions. So it's about how do we then support people in the community development approach, so asset-based approach is 
as a term that's being used. So how do you help people to build on what they've already got that's positive? So looking at their lives as a glass half full rather than a glass half empty. So how do you build on the assets that they already have? And when you talk to individuals, you'd be amazed. I think, I think one of the things that I've been amazed is actually when you talk to individuals, they bring an awful lot to the table. That's not always recognised for the value that they have. So it's about the approach. So what makes Murray Hall different is it's not just what we do, it's how we do it. Manjula does that much work. You would not imagine how much work she does. Oh gosh, she goes in the community, she goes to the homes, she visits you, she visits you day after day, gives you strength, you know, and you can speak to her and she just listens. She's the most, she's like an angel. <laughs> she comes to your home, Manjula does, and she's like an angel walking through the door because she brings help and it's help you need and she's, it's good help, it isn't, they don't walk away, they hang on to, they look after you until the end, and I mean the end, you know, and they never leave you. Years ago when we were funded by Macmillan, the Bridges Support Service was funded by Macmillan Cancer Support, we were approached by their community development worker who offered us the opportunity to get some corporate support from them. And what happened was we had a, a, an elderly couple that we'd arranged for um, an internal lift to go from the ground floor into the, into the bedroom, which obviously, due to his illness, helped him to sort of go to bed at night and different things. But obviously what happened was the whole of their house was then kind of wrecked in a, in a decorating sense. What we were able to do was get in contact with Macmillan and they then employed their corporate um, team. Um, I think it was from another, from a big organisation that did corporate sponsorship. And they were able to go into the house, uh, redecor, plaster the walls, redecorate the um, the walls, and uh, fit new carpets, and just make it back into a home. Because it went from being a home into a building site, then into a you know, semi-building site when the, when the adaption had been done, but then it made it back into a home. And um, the gentleman, you know, he was chuffed with his lift going up and down, but I think um, for him, his his wife was very house proud, and I think the, the addition of the lift was kind of a mixed blessing for her. Um, so having that corporate support that went in for them, um, yeah, it was really quite special. I would uh, say that Murray Hall it has three C's predominantly that they, they involve themselves in. One is care, the other one is compassion, and the other one is definitely community. You can't be an organisation like Murray Hall without having care and compassion. And if we break the word compassion down, then com is with and, and passion. Uh, it doesn't mean that sort of thing, you know, that someone's passionately in love. Actually, the old word, passion, meant suffering. So basically, compassion and caring is where the organisation comes alongside and can actually feel how other people are feeling. And by doing that, they can then actually offer solutions to problems that exist. So from the children's centres to working with mental health, and end of life, older people. And through all of those stories, the golden thread was our values that you could see how we've supported people underpinned by the values of the organisation. And that was not overtaking, but empowering them to have a voice. And sometimes people just need that encouragement. So you just need to stand by them and encourage them to have the voice that they already have, but to be heard. And then sometimes it's about navigating they don't always understand what the health system or the local government or the local um, health services and what their entitlements are. So it's helping people to understand information and that can be empowering. That's the first step onto empowerment is helping people to understand what they have a right to or what their options are. If they don't understand what the options are, 
then they can't ask for the support. And, and a lady once said to me, who was dying and she didn't know she had access to all these different support. And what she said was, how can I ask for what I don't know about? Which is true for every single one of us. If you don't know about it, how can you ask for it? Man Jula is my friend from church, obviously. And she found out Keith was poorly, because obviously church. And she says, well, did I want to, Keith want to go to the stroke group because I told him he got a stroke. He'd had a stroke and I, I went to that group obviously. Um, he was poorly after my husband he had my cancer, like, you know. And then uh, he developed, his cancer was worse, obviously. And he had to have a lot of treatment, which he went to Newcastle. And uh, a very proud man, my husband was, you know, and uh, I couldn't cope. And he needed so much equipment, you know. I was like, I mean, the stairs and everything, you know. And they kept coming, I've got to pay all this money. I couldn't afford it, you know. I says, man, you um, need so much equipment, I, you know, I can't do it. And she came and uh, brought someone else with me. And they arranged for my husband to have a bed. And my husband, he needed cleaning, you know. And um, I, I don't put him down right now. My husband needed bathing, you know. And I said, you can't send a lady to my husband because he will not have it, you know. Being in the army, he was in Malaya, so a very proud man. And they sent this young man called Steve, and it was a godsend. And I tell you what he did for me. <laughs> I'm going to cry thinking about it. Um, he said, he come, he said, off you go, off you go. Because I never left him myself. I'd got no one to look after him because he was so proud. Oh, and he looked after him till almost the end. And if I could win anyone, I would give this young man, you know. And then was, they gave us, brought all his equipment, everything he needed. We had, you know, the, the nurses. They sent the nurses, you know, all the proper stuff. And like I say, I didn't have to pay for anything. It was on loan, obviously, which was God sent me because I didn't want it, did I? They let me a wheelchair, you know, and um, it was really poor. And I was quite ill, you know, because I'd looked after myself, obviously, for about 18 months. So I was quite thin at this, at this stage, like, right, you know. And um, the doctor thinks, says, Mrs. Mal, you can't keep doing this, you'll have to. And you knew he was almost at the end of his life. And uh, he couldn't go to bed, you know, or uh, the hospital, you know. So Manjula, I said, Manjula, make sure it's right. She found him a bed in Rhine View. It was perfect to have a look in the gardens, because he loved his garden. My husband did like, you know. She found me a bed there. And she was there, and they let me sleep at the bottom of the bed. After he passed away, I mean, they took all the equipment away, which was marvellous for me, I didn't need it. They came to visit me with flowers and everything, you know, which was like, I got also a, a listeners group, you know, I got listening group, the widows group, the cancer group, you know, and I'm still at the cancer group now. I've still got the widows group. We go on a wet once every month at Wednesday. Can you believe all this? We do uh, pregnancy advice and contraception advice and we do bereavement uh, as well and counselling in bereavement. So sometimes so actually we sperm to worm rather than cradle to grave. So um, we do everything. We run children's centres um, and we run bridges um, which support people in, in their last, uh, last uh, months of their life. Um, so we do it spans um, uh, com uh, everybody's complete life. So we've been doing that for a number of years and we've actually grown from that little desk in a church to uh, one time with 130 employees, over 100 volunteers, turning over six million pounds. Um, and that's one of the things that all these uh, regeneration money wanted. They said, oh, you must have a sustainability project. That once the government money finishes, that you must have a way of actually keep your organisation and running. As the recession hit in, in 2007, we felt public services are going uh, are, are increasing, uh, being diminished. And um, if anything, the charities probably needed more now than ever before, because far more need are out there. Needs bigger than ever before. 
there's less money than ever before and there's less government money so really charities like Murray Hall are really needed and, and it's people coming together uh, and, and not going to be reliant on government money. So things have changed over those 25 years um, and now the charities is needed more than ever to come up with innovative ways of how they can uh, deliver services what's needed in the community. If, if I spoke to a person in the street they wouldn't even know what Murray Hall was doing but Murray Hall is an organisation that is more like an organism rather than an organisation. Does that make sense? Um, Murray Hall is, is, is not an organisation where we're looking at the balance sheet and the profit and loss account, so we're looking for uh, a standard procedure that whereby we can replicate it a thousand times and get a thousand times more uh, per unit. Uh, we're looking at the real needs of, of the community. We're a, a community anchor organisation and that means that we've got a presence in the community physically and the services and individuals as well out there so supporting people but we have different buildings that we manage this being one of them we have two other children's centres and another community centre as well so we have a, a presence across Sandwell and Birmingham and actually across the black country as well, some of the support that we provide. It was only when I became involved with the, the food bank, uh, setting up the food bank and then operating within the board of trustees that I fully understood exactly what Murray Hall did and the impact that it has in the, um, in the community. You know, sometimes, you know, even though people don't realise it, some of the things that are happening in the community for the benefit of the people uh, they wouldn't realise it until it wasn't there. Does that make sense? So they don't understand that its source is here. They just understand that there is a benefit uh, that they can enjoy and that, which will transform their lives. We did a conference some years ago now. It was in the public, what's the art centre at the time. And it was probably one of the first conferences that ever took place in the public. So it was in June, it was a really wet June, Friday, and we put on a conference, a compassionate community conference, and we had a, an international speaker, and it was, it was really vibrant. The, the place itself was a vibrant colours, but the energy that we produced at, at the end of that day was just amazing, given that the subject matter was end of life. And we, every single person that left was enthused about the concept of compassionate communities. And that was just really, really a brilliant day just because of the energy that we um, produced. There was about 100 people who attended, all of them um, from the public to service users to volunteers to professionals from health and social care. So real, real mix. And the day consisted of not just speakers, but we had we commissioned a poetry. So somebody recited the poem and we commissioned one, but she did two. So that was amazing. Then we had a storyteller then we had a premiere showing of a film of an end of life by Rosetta Life. And one of the comments was, they've never been to a conference so um, invigorating. And, and you know, when the subject was death, dying and loss, I thought that was quite a neat trick that we pulled off. So that sticks out as a, a, a really positive, memorable day for me. Mm. The, the ethos centres around care, it centres around compassion, and it centres around having roots in the community. Without those three, we can't do that. There are some organisations that just simply um, look at the community and they just simply replicate their, their uh, services, but uh, we actually tailor what we, we can see to the needs of a particular uh, person or an organisation or whatever. I think just, um, just for the amount of people that we've supported, but I think for the, the way that people have been supported as well, I think just to be remembered for kind of meeting people's needs at a time when they really need some kind of support. And I think, you know, as I said, funding is a challenge and fundraising is a challenge. But, you know, I'd like to think that Murray Hall will still be here in 25 more years.
I probably won't be, I'll be retired. <laughs> but, you know, it would be nice to think that, you know, moving forward, it could still be here in 10, 15, 20 years' time. Murray Hall's been here for a really long time and we plan to be here for the future to make sure that we're here to support the community who support us as well.